Welcome back to the Badass is the New Black podcast. I'm your host, Chrissy Chin. Here on the podcast, I help women who are excited to start and grow their business online. I speak to a ton of network marketers and network marketers that maybe have another business that they're growing simultaneously alongside, coaches, people of that nature, women of that nature. I help them discover the edge that they need to stand out and attract more clients and customers or maybe business builders, whatever you're looking for. I help you sell more. I help you scale so that you can live the life you dream of, which is working less and enjoying more. Can I get an amen on that? All right, today we're going to talk about the benefits of um, niching down. This is going to be the start of another series because I just love series so much. I already did a series on uh, building your badass brand on social media, so this is going to be our little niche series. So niche, niche, <laughs> what the heck is it? According to the Cambridge Dictionary, it's pronounced niche with a T, niche. I'm kind of pronouncing the T in there, in American and Canadian English and niche in British English. So you'll hear me many a times, niche will fly out, niche will fly out, I'll say whatever. You'll get the idea, right? So I might use it interchangeably. The definition of niche um, as an adjective is denoting or relating to products or services or interests that appeal to a small, specialized section of the population. Okay, so if you didn't know what it meant, that is what it means. For example, let's start with a really broad topic or person and we'll niche down. So starting with women, you could niche down a little bit further to be moms. You could niche down further, moms that wanna lose weight, niching down even further, moms that want to lose postpartum weight, niching down even further, moms that want to lose the last 10 pounds of postpartum weight. All right, we're getting pretty niche there. Let's go again. Moms 35 to 40 years old that want to lose the last 10 pounds of postpartum weight. Wow, we're getting super niche there, but we can even take it further. Moms that are 35 to 40 that want to lose the last 10 pounds of postpartum weight that hate the gym. Okay, we get we went from super broad women <laughs> to moms that want to lose the last 10 pounds of postpartum weight that hate the gym that are between the ages of 35 and 40. That is super niche. All right, here's another one. People who need health. Well, that is everybody in the world. <laughs> People who want to be healthy. All right, we've cut that down a little bit. We've decreased the population there. How about women who want to be healthy? All right, we've eliminated the men. Sorry, bros, we've eliminated you, half the population, we've niched down. Niched down even further, women between the ages of 30 and 40. Gender and age are great ways to start niching down. Just a little side note. So women 30 to 40 who want to be healthy, let's niche down even more. Women between 30 and 40 who want to get healthy, lever leveraging intermittent fasting. All right, we've really niched down. We went from people so women between the ages of 30 and 40 who want to get healthy, leveraging intermittent fasting. Okay, so you get the idea. So I want you to practice niching down. I actually want you to practice getting as niche as you possibly can until you can't go any further. I want you to literally niche down so much that you think that there's one person in the world that you could possibly be talking to. That's how niche I want you to be. Okay. Start with your broad idea of who you want to serve and then start narrowing it down to a super specific ideal client. Some companies really thrive off of niches, others not so much. If you are in network marketing or you're in coaching, you will 100% thrive off of having a niche. Don't be scared of niching down. You will attract those outside of your niche unintentionally. For example, Biggest Loser. I don't know why this came to mind with <laughs> this brand, this show. They focused on their show on helping people who needed to lose, what, like 150 to 300 pounds? But guess what? They have a lot of people that only need to lose 35 pounds or 50 pounds that use their, their programs, their products, their, they sell books. You know, that's not a stat, but an observation of mine that clearly the people on their show needed to lose massive amounts of weights. Um, but shit, I wanted, I watched that show and I only needed to lose what, 10 pounds at the time, you know? And so there's people out there using their products that weren't maybe in their niche audience 
to start with, but they've attracted those people. So don't be too scared of niching down. I have to take my own advice on this all the time. You may discover that um, niching down so, so tight could possibly hurt you. And maybe you actually want to back up a step or two. Remember when I said niche down all the way till you think there's like one person in the population? That may be too niche. And so maybe you need to step it back a, a category or two or three, and then that is your sweet spot. But I want you to practice going from super broad to as niche as possible to see if there is something there that you really align with. Let's take a tiny little break from this badass podcast to talk about Kajabi, or as my husband calls it, Punjabi. Babe, it starts with a K. K-A-J-A-B-I. This is the platform that literally makes all the magic happen. It's plug and play, no coding necessary. And guess what, you guys? The best thing about it is that you get your very own mobile app with it. I looked into building an app and it was going to be over $100,000. You get your own right there. The platform is so affordable too. So instead of paying for individual platforms like your CRM system, which is going to host your email, your landing pages, which is going to capture your email, your website, which is going to be where all the magic happens, a community space, it's literally all in one. So it doesn't matter if you want to host courses, educational classes, have libraries in there for your team. This is absolutely the way to go. And I have a month free for you to check it out. So hop over to my website, thechrissychin.com forward slash Kajabi, K-A-J-A-B-I. And you can check out a month for free. I cannot wait to see what you create. Please do me a favor. Send me a DM, send me an email once you've created something so I can see it and check it out. Can't wait for you to get started and scale your business like a badass boss. All right, let's get back to the podcast. All right, so let's dive into the benefits of niching down because this is the whole topic of today's podcast. All right, number one, it enhances your customer relationships. So when you niche down, you have a smaller audience. This really allows you to be a lot more present with those people, have more impactful engagements with them. That builds faster trust, which will increase the chances of your sale, increase sales. Okay. So that's really, really important. Reduces competition. There may be a ton of people out there teaching moms how to lose weight. All right. We, that's like a broad thing. Moms how to lose weight. But how many people out there are teaching moms between the ages of 35 and 40? So maybe that's, and you could even get more, more niche, like moms 35 to 40 that have a, like two children, like second child, probably in that at that higher age range, you're going to find that the women that you are serving are probably people that have multiple kids um, or they just started having kids later in life. Um, but okay. So <laughs> anyway, I got off on a little tangent. I had that little extra idea of like, oh, they're probably having multiple kids if they're at between 35 and 40. All right. So how many people out there are teaching moms between the ages of 35 and 40 that want to lose the last 10 pounds of postpartum weight that hate going to the gym? A lot less people are teaching that than the amount of people that are just teaching moms how to lose weight, right? So niching down reduces the competition out there. That can be a good thing. can be a very good thing. Better word of mouth growth. So people in your niche tend to hang out with other people that fall into your niche. People like tribes and communities and hang out with people that are like them. And they will be really excited to talk you up to a fellow friend who can benefit from what you have to offer. Okay. If you work with pregnant women, you better believe that when your clients or customers who's, you know, pregnant, you worked with her, when her friend gets knocked up, she is definitely going to share your name and say, Oh my gosh, Sarah was amazing when I was pregnant. You know, maybe it's like, um, I keep doing fitness, but like, um, supporting pregnant women who want to stay fit or supporting women who want to teaching women how to stay fit during pregnancy. So when a friend gets pregnant, who is also into fitness, they're going to send them right to Sarah, right to you. Okay. So again, better word of mouth growth and that's free. Oh, it's amazing. Free is amazing. All right. Helps you become an expert faster. Focusing on a niche 
requires you to work in a very specific uh, space in a much more focused capacity. And so you grow your skills faster and you become known as the expert faster because that's literally all that you are dealing with. So it's like a totally like off topic thought, but like thinking of like a divorce lawyer or, um, or just a generic lawyer, right? So like that's broad, or maybe you like specialize in divorce. Okay. I don't know why I thought of that. <laughs> Super random. Okay. Um, so maybe here's, <laughs> here's a better one that I actually wrote down, which is probably more significant to my audience out there in terms of an example. Um, if you are looking for a dietitian or someone um, that's going to support you nutritionally, but you are a vegan, then you will likely seek out a vegan dietitian because you know that they're much more knowledgeable in that area than just a dietitian that works with clients of all diets. Okay. Someone could, they could definitely, who's teaching all diets, they could definitely give you a vegan plan, but someone who's actually living and breathing vegan and speaks to vegan people is going to be a lot more knowledgeable. And so you're, you're probably going to seek that out. So imagine if that's you, again, you become the expert faster. All right. Increased visibility. So this is like great for PR. When you're very niche, it will increase your chances of being recognized for what you do. So when I'm looking for people to come onto the podcast, because I do have guests on here, I'm looking for people who really know their stuff. So they're the expert and they often, um, they're an expert in a specific field. So maybe I want to bring someone to talk about copywriting, right? And give us some tips about that. But knowing that my audience is primarily network marketers and, and maybe coaches, then I want to find a copywriter who specializes in writing copy for those types of audiences. So I'm looking for someone else who's very um, niche so they can come on and speak about a very specific topic. So you may be sought out more uh, because you have a very niche topic, uh, but it will also make it easier for you to pitch yourself for PR things. So if you want to be on someone else's podcast or you want to be in someone else's live or you want to do an Instagram story takeover, um, you will be able to pitch yourself better because you know exactly what you have to offer. You know, it sets you apart from the rest of everyone else. And if they find that valuable, then they will want to promote you. Okay. So increased visibility when you have a niche, less time discovering needs. Since you work with a very specific ideal client or audience, you don't need to do as much research to find out their needs and how to serve um, more people, right? So you have a very specific person in mind. You know exactly what they need. You don't have to spend a ton of time collecting data from your audience because you have such a broad audience. Imagine if you had women and you're trying to come out with like the next product or the next educational piece, you might have to spend a lot more time researching what the needs are in the community. Whereas if you have a very specific person in mind, you, you know exactly what their needs are. So less time discovering needs. And then lastly, it can be a lot more fun. Many times you get to your niche by accident. Many of you in network marketing that are starting to develop your personal brands because that is the wave of the future. You have to have one. You have to, everyone has a personal brand, but you have to be um, developing it and leveraging it um, to grow faster online. So many of you in that area or in coaching, your niche is a reflection of you before your problem was solved, right? So before you started using those products, you had a problem. You purchased those products to solve your problem. And now you speak to other women or people or whoever who have that problem that you had and you help them solve it, right? Um, it can be so much fun working with the people that you truly get and understand versus trying to cater to a broader audience. So how much fun is it to work with people that were just like you and you can relate to them completely? and help them as opposed to like kind of feeling like, oh, I'm talking to everybody here and I don't know who I'm really talking to and I don't really have much experience in this arena, but like they want my help, but it's because I picked such a broad audience. It's like if you can get super niche and know who you're talking to, it just becomes a lot more fun. Trust me, 
Trust me, trust me. All right, so that is it. To do's until next week, write out your niche journey. Start with your broad audience. Start with something as broad as people and then niche down to see as niche as you can possibly get till there's only one person on the planet that fits in that niche. That's how specific I want you to get in it. Okay. It doesn't mean you're going to end up on that very bottom line. You may end up somewhere in the middle, but I want you to see visually how you can go from that broad topic down to a very, very specific audience. I would love it if you would send me some of these niche journeys that you're writing down straight to my DMs. You can find me on Instagram at the Chrissy Chin, or you can find me over on Facebook. Send me um, a message to my Facebook, off my business page, the Chrissy Chin. You can find me over there. I would love, love, love to see that starting point and what you've niched down to. And then you can even shoot me maybe which one you've decided to settle on. Next episode, I'm going to give you some tips on niching down that can help you discover where you should stop in your niche journey. So if you have this whole niche journey written down, but you're like, gosh, I'm not really sure. I'm really hesitant to go down five levels. I am going to help walk you through that. Should you go all the way down? Should you go three from the bottom? Should you stick with the top? I guarantee my recommendation is not going to be go with the very first thing. I'll tell you that. Anyway, that's going to be the next episode. So stick around every Friday morning, bright and early. We release the new podcast. So make sure you are subscribing so you can get that notification. And if you're loving what you're listening to and you're over on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and rate write a little review, tell me what you're loving, and just connect with me over on social so we can hang out and have some more fun. Talk to you later. Bye.